free Odell. Well, he's going to be free now. Mm-hmm. Unless somebody snags him and grabs him on the waiver wire. And that's another thing that's a question mark is what is his contract? Is it the full freight? Because if it's the full freight, he's going to drop like a stone. Did the and, and No one's picking him up. And then he's going to be a free agent, which Cleveland knows is a problem. They want him wearing purple. Do they want him wearing black and gold? Black and I don't think he'll be wearing black and gold. Well, black but and gold. I'm just saying they don't want him in the yeah. Well, maybe that you're talking about New Orleans. That doesn't mean I, I think the NFC is no problem for them. Okay. They, they certainly don't want him wearing purple. So what? Red and blue? I don't know. Red, white, and blue for the New England Patriots? They yeah. don't want that. Yeah. Anyone, but they're so, into it. So what I'm saying is that the negotiation would be if if there's still, you know, if if there's less money that's owed to Odell by another team, it might make him more likely to be snagged by the waiver wire as opposed to wherever he wants to go, which Odell doesn't want. Certainly when you've got – Brian Flores saying this morning with Devontae Parker doubtful that they're going to look at the waiver wire and see if they can deal with their wide receiver problem that way. Mm. Would 13 want to wind up on the, uh, you take his talents to South Beach like his Twitter friend? Potentially. I don't know. If Deshaun's there, does he believe in Tua? Does he want to go to a one-win team right now? I wouldn't want to when there's all these other places that can come and go get me. Like New England. How great would he look in New England right now? Now then, New England and Bill would know exactly if they're going to bring in somebody that is freelancing or something like that. Bill can look at the tape in two seconds flat and know if Odell's not hewing to the game plan based on all the conversation. Would he want that? Do you want to have a rookie quarterback who's just absolutely sailing the smooth seas right now to have somebody come in and say, I want the ball? which every wide receiver might be doing to the kid right now anyway. Do you want to bring that in? Do you want to bring somebody in that the quarterback is going to have to say, I've got to get to the ball to him? I don't think he's thinking that one split second when he's pre-snap, post-snap operating this Patriots offense. Do you want that? That's a question and answer only Belichick can provide. What about New Orleans? Can New Orleans use him? You bet. With Michael yeah. Thomas done for the year, would he want to go back to the Bayou, Odell? Maybe. Hmm. Would he want to be the receiver for Trevor Simeon, who would just today was named the starting quarterback for the Saints' home date with the Falcons, which is pretty damn big for week nine because the Bucks are on a bye week. If the Saints win this game this weekend, guess who's in first place in the NFC South through nine weeks? That would be the New Orleans Saints, who again are at home against the Atlanta Falcons before they go visit the Tennessee Titans for the Titans' first home game without Derrick Henry. There's that. What about the San Francisco 49ers? Could he be out there? Debo Samuel a bit nicked up right now. Brandon Ayuk telling The Athletic that he didn't know how to practice, confirming essentially that, yes, he sure as heck was in his coach's doghouse <laughs> back in September and is beginning to emerge there. You want to add Odell to that mix? Would he want to go there with a rookie quarterback and Trey Lance and, and, or, and or Jimmy G? Because, again, he may not have the choice either. Somebody may snag him on waivers. Another one to throw out for you. Now, this is the place that I'd want to go if I was Odell Beckham Jr. Green Bay, Wisconsin. You've got Aaron Rodgers when he comes back from COVID-19, and we hope he is well. And you've got Devontae Adams. There is no number two there, with all due respect to Alan Lazard, the current number 13 that resides there, and Valdez Scantling, and the rest of everybody. If you've got Devontae Adams on one side, and you've got Odell on another side, and guess what? Of course, everybody needs to hew to a playbook. Everybody's got to do that. And again, this is the big question. Is Odell not in the right spot for Baker? Is Baker not doing what needs to be done for Odell? I know where Steve Smith Sr. resides on that. Ooh. As he went on my network 
our network last night and called Baker average and that Odell's gone because of him. And Steve Smith Sr. can look at tape and know what's what. And he's he, he pegged that right on Baker. But one guy that can kind of freelance and get outside the playbook to the tune of two 13-win seasons with Matt LaFleur anyway is Aaron Rodgers. And if Aaron Rodgers is on the final last dance in Green Bay, what better way to get him some help right now dropped out of the sky than Odell Beckham Jr., who I think has got a lot of runway left. And I think it would be a remarkable spot for him to wind up, not only because of everything that's gone on in Cleveland and everything that the Green Bay Packers could get out of him, but in terms of his hmm, career, what a wild place for him to wind up since we all know that was the one playoff game that he has played in was in Lambeau Field and the talk leading up to all of that was his trip to South Florida that has been the last high point of the New York Giants franchise what a uh, an interesting bookend things would be right there and I think it would be huge for Odell I think he would totally ball out there and I think Green Bay it would be totally uncharacteristic of them to do this He also punched the wall in Green he Bay sure after did. that game. He yeah, that's sure right. did. That's right. He sure did. And so it would be a wild place for him to wind up. But he's got to clear waivers. And interestingly enough, that process will not be done because this, this whole separation between Browns and Odell happening today, he won't be clearing waivers until Monday. So this is all for us to talk about on the Sunday morning shows. And this is all for us to sit back and wait. Normally, this process takes a business day, and there are no business days over the weekend, which is interesting, technically, because the biggest business day in the NFL is a Sunday. But I guess everybody's out for the weekend. So how many and segments so, on game day morning is this going to uh, I, I don't over under two and I a half. I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I got to look at, I got to look at the early slate of games and how compelling they are and how much that, that will take up our oxygen in the room. <laughs> I'm sure Aaron Rodgers not being available for the Packers this weekend and why, and taking on the chiefs and it's how Jordan window love window. will look. I'm sure that will be quite a bit on our rundown on game day morning on Sunday, but just to bring this all kind of, Together, before we turn to T.J. Watt in our first segment here uh, of interviews on the Rich Eisen Show coming up on this Friday, is I'm wondering if the Browns waited all the way to Friday. So he couldn't play this weekend? Correct. Yeah. And also, if he's not through waivers until Monday, the process of finding a new team, that could go fast. It's entirely possible that could go fast. Because if the Saints were kicking the tires on him on a trade deadline day and they, the, they just couldn't – figure out what the compensation is, then maybe the Saints are ready to just call him up on the spot and say, come on back home. Come on back home. We'll 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 put money in your we'll put money in your hands just like you did to the LSU kids around here. You know? Rich, Rich so, I'm laughing because of course the Browns play the Bengals this week, but you know who they play in week ten? Saints? The Patriots. The Patriots. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that's a compelling one. I don't, that's think, a compelling I don't think one. that's gonna happen. But. I don't know. That would be compelling. You know how you know yeah. you know how everybody that's always been, you know, on the downside or, or on a downslope portion of their career um always gets reinvigorated more often than not by the yeah. Patriots. Yeah, Bill was actually asked about adding players mid season. He noted that we've done it before with uh, you know, keep Tlaib and James Harrison, do whatever it takes to win. Yeah. And uh, they got, it, it'll be an interesting conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to be a fly on the wall there. Um, but not not only that, I'm I'm wondering if the Browns did that to also take Odell off the chessboard for next week, too. Because, you know, Perhaps, he's yeah. going to have to be onboarded COVID, right? Oh, off the clear uh, protocol. Well, I mean, and, and, and if negotiations take until Wednesday, will he be out there for a new team right away? I don't know. Probably not. So this takes him off the chessboard for two weeks. And certainly if there's any bad blood and it appears to be some, that's one way that you could sort of send somebody out the door <laughs> with that sort of transactional shiv. But Odell's now done in a second spot. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.